In today's Project Diaries, I will be reviewing a solar powered pest repellent. Hi guys and welcome to Project Diaries. Today's video, I'm gonna try and solve a lot of your problems that people are asking me to solve. Now, uh, lots of people are saying they're getting invaders into their garden, be it from rats, mice, badgers, squirrels, all the way up to deer. And what's the best way to prevent these? Now, I've already done a homemade repellent to uh, show you how to do this out of a liquid form. But uh, because this is England, we get quite a lot of rain and that will only last until the, the rain sort of comes in and washes it all away. Now this has been happening to me recently. As you can see, I've recently filled up all of my raised beds, but there's something coming in and digging up the freshly laid compost. Now if you're really interested in finding out what animals are coming into your garden, here's a quick map on uh, animal footprints. So I thought I'd just give you this quick diagram to show you roughly what might be coming into your garden. Now obviously this depends on what country you're in and whereabouts in the country you are. But whether it be birds, small mammals or even large deer, all of these can be a problem. But when it was snowing it was really easy to figure it out just by the footprints. This one's fairly easy as it could be next door's cat. But I couldn't quite figure out what these ones were, they're a lot harder to work out. This one's obviously a medium sized bird, maybe a crow or even a seagull. But now all the snow is gone, uh, I'm ready to, to set up the garden and I spent most of yesterday, instead of uh, digging up the compost and filling up the vegetable beds, I actually uh, started removing a lot of the faeces in the garden. Now as you know, this can, uh, can contain lots of bacteria and harmful things that you really don't want getting into your vegetable patch. So it's really ideal to get something that is going to stop these pests from coming in. Now I, I got this last year and as you can hear, it's, it's broken already. Uh, because the foxes were playing with it. Um, now this was quite expensive and it comes, it was supposed to be solar panelled, uh, powered, uh, but you can see the discoloration in the top plastic where it's really cheap uh, and any discoloration will stop power, <coughs> the sun's energy going into there and giving this power. So I, I think it just stopped working. There's only uh, two settings on and off. So I've decided to try out another one on the market. Now this one's come to my attention and it looks <laughs> incredible. It's so sturdy compared to the other one. This, this is really robust. And even though it's roughly the same price as the other one, I think it's cheaper actually. Um, it comes with five different settings that you can see on here. You can change the frequencies uh, according to if you know what, um, what is coming in to invade your garden. So here's a quick overview of the five different settings. Now each animal can hear different levels of frequencies. And even with humans, depending on your age, it can change the different levels of frequencies that you can hear. There are apps you can get on your mobile devices, so if you want to have a laugh with each generation of your family, you can test out who can hear what frequencies. But with this device, zero is off, one is for smaller rodents like mice, and it will also work with things like rats and squirrels. Number two is for larger dogs, foxes, and maybe badgers. Three is for smaller dogs, cats, and birds. Now remember, this doesn't harm the animals, so if you have pets, this will just keep them out of that certain part of your garden. I've had a lot of people on my Facebook gardening group saying their cats are now eating their plants, so this device would be ideal. Setting number four will give you a strong flashing strobe light. This is to visually deter any animals. And setting number five is all the functions in one go. Personally, I'm gonna set mine to number five because I seem to have so many different animals coming into the garden at one time. And the other switch is sensitivity. This is if you have a really tiny garden, you wanna have it on a low sensitivity rate. And if you have a larger garden, you can set it right up to the top and it comes with a solar panel right on the top so there's no plastic covering it, there's nothing to discolour, everything's gonna come straight in and uh, that's gonna absorb as much as the sun's power as possible. It's also got this detector, much like say if you've got a patio and you've got a light that flickers on and off every time someone moves past, this will detect any kind of movement from uh, rats or uh, foxes or cats, things like that, and it will give a UV light or a, a noise depending on which setting you have it on. Now this won't harm any animals at all. Um, if you're a vegan gardener and things like that, stuff like this is perfect to, to keep these critters out of your garden. So today I'm gonna to do a quick review to see how it works. Fingers crossed that it is, because I, I'm not sure I wanna spend any more time getting rid of feces out of the vegetables. I really wanna just start growing and get out there. So I'm gonna do an unboxing now and show you how to do it. Now before I go into the review, if you want to get hold of these online, I will leave some Amazon links in the description box below. Depending on whether you're in the UK or America, the manufacturing name seems to change. Currently on Amazon, they do seem to be cheaper in America, but at the time of making this video, UK Amazon are offering a buy one, get one half price offer, but that may change, so check it out in the description box below. 
So here's the box it comes in, and I'm not even going to try to attempt to pronounce the company name. <laughs> Now I'm not associated with these companies at all, I'm just making this video to try and make sure people don't get ripped off because there's so many different varieties on the market at the moment and there's loads of cheap versions that simply don't work, so be really careful when you're buying these. Now as you saw it does come with a white USB cable, you will need to charge the battery from 4 hours to 24 hours on the first use only. This is just to get the device working at the beginning, so after that it will be powered by solar power. I also like the fact that these companies use minimal packaging and very little plastic so I'm really happy with that. So here's what it looks like and the solar panels on the top. And when charging for the first time you plug in the USB cable in the bottom. So here's the button for frequencies, you can see the five different settings and this one here is for sensitivity. Now it also comes with two adjustable tongue and groove height stands. This is if you want to stick it in the ground in your raised beds or anywhere around your garden. Or there's a hanging hole on the back if you want to mount it on a wall. So here are the two tongue and groove stands that you can do. All you do is simply just push one inside the other and then you clip it in underneath where the USB hole is. If you want to you can just use the one with the rounded bottom but I like to get this high. It also protects the USB socket as well which is great. Here's a quick diagram to show you the rough distance that this device will cover and as you can see on the highest settings it's roughly around 85 square meters and a radius of roughly 110 degrees. So anything outside of this won't trigger the alarms. When placing this in the garden you really don't want to hide it under a bush or in a shady area. You really want to make sure that that solar panel gets as much sunlight as possible. This would allow the battery to constantly charge during the day so when all the nocturnal animals come out in the evening you'll have enough charge to see you through the night. The other good thing about these ones is they're completely waterproof unlike the other one that I had so you can leave these out all year round. Just make sure you clean the solar panel every now and then in case it gets dirty. So as you can see the snow is back but it gives me great time to see what animals are coming and it looks like a next door's cat as you can see the printer in the snow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this to full volume and I'm going to set it to number 5. So that does all of the uh, different frequencies and settings at the same time. And I'm going to plant this about there, push that in nicely. And that goes all the way up to the bed. And I don't know if you saw that, it actually went off when I moved my hand there. You can see the flashing. So I'm going to leave that for a few days and then see if there's any more uh, animal prints over this bed. Now as I've been pretty ill this year, I've not been able to see Grandad as much as I wanted, but there's something in his house that's nibbled through his phone cable, which is why I haven't been able to get hold of him for the past few days. Which Grandad's not happy about. Bloody hell. Huh? <laughs> a mouse. It's also been nibbling away at his veg, so he's really unhappy that he can't have these for his dinner tonight. So I'm going to use one of these devices indoors to see if I can get rid of this mouse problem. You can also see that down here there's loads of rodent droppings, so there must be a nest in his house somewhere, which I'm really upset about. So I'm just going to get rid of these potatoes in the compost. They're still fine to chuck in the compost, so that's alright. Then I'm just going to get the device without any stand or anything and just prop it up here. I've put it on all the settings as well, as you can see the lights are going off. And I've set it on the most sensitive as well, so just in case they creep in. Now obviously it's not ideal to use one of these in the house if you've got pets or small children. The frequencies will hurt their ears quite a bit. But with it facing the wall, hopefully it'll only trigger if any of the mice come to try and eat his food. I know Grandad's neighbour's been having loads of building work, so I'm wondering if they've come in from there. So here's the raised beds three days later, and as you can see we've had a bit more snow, and the solar panel's actually covered up, so I need to clear that off. So there's no fresh footprints or any sign of feces, so this is working really well, and this hole here is just from before, but as you can see it's full up with snow, so it's old. So it's working great. So let's go in and see if the mouse is still in the house. So I'm just going to pull this trolley out gently. I also got this on Amazon, so I'll leave this in the description box below as well if you want to get hold of one of these. I find it really helpful. But as you can see, there's not a single sign of any nibbles in the potatoes at all. In fact, they've started to chip because it's so hot in Grandad, so I might even put these in the garden later on. They've not been at the onions either, which is a really great sign to show that this device is really working indoors. Also, if you want to learn how to grow potatoes from these, the link is on the screen now. So here they are three months later. I have raked it over this morning because these beds are now ready to have anything planted into them. I'm really impressed with this device. I've not had a single bit of feces or footprint since I've installed them. And these are just great.
Well, that's it for today. Uh, again, I've put the uh, the links in the description box below. Again, I'm not associated to these companies at all. I've just found these are the best ones. So please don't get ripped off by more expensive ones or cheap imitations. These are the best ones that I've found online so far. And they, they really seem to work, so I'm really happy. Uh, as you can see, I'm freezing again. It's mid-spring and we're still due more snow, which is completely random. Uh, but you know we're just going to try and carry on and hopefully have a decent growing season this year anyway if you liked today's video don't forget to give it a thumbs up click the subscribe button if you'd like uh, all of my future notifications and click the bell button too anyway good uh, good luck growing this year and i'll see you again soon take care of yourself if you'd like to keep up to date on all of my future releases click the subscribe button here here are some links to some of my other videos and if you tried this or any other project, I'd love to see your progress, so please join my Facebook gardening group where thousands of people are sharing photos and ideas daily. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time.